Is air cooling your PC a bad idea? Well, obviously, if you're asking the question like that, the answer can only be no, not in general, not really. However, the real question to ask, but which would have been a worse title, would have been how far can you push air cooling? And that's the real question. So for example, can you cool the latest gen i9-14900K on a budget air cooler? And the answer to that, again, pretty simple, is probably not. You do need a 360 meters only one water cooler and a very good one for that. If you want to handle the insane power consumption of the i9-14900K, for example. However, what we have here today is a 12 core, 24 threaded Ryzen 9 1500X. And now this thing is indeed a power hungry CPU. However, what we have here is the Cryorig CX6. And now this is supposed to be one of the top of the line Cryorig coolers. And it's supposed to be able to handle this Ryzen 9 easily, even if your case doesn't have the best airflow. So what we have here is the MSI Gun Gear 110R. It's a very good looking case, but it's a very badly cooled case because you see just glass on the front, glass on the side, no outtake unless you add fans. So generally, when going with air cooling, you want a very high airflow case, which is something that doesn't really matter if you're going with water cooling. But towards the end of this video, we will actually discuss more when you should get one or the other. As of right now, I say we focus on this thing, taking a look at it and actually trying it and seeing what the temperatures are like. Now, this is in full copper base and it's supposed to handle up to 260 watts of TDP which is why, again, it should theoretically handle an i9-14900K as well if you set it to respect the stock boost option, if it makes sense. But on this Ryzen, we want to see if it can handle it at full power. That's what we're interested in, without losing performance, since on this channel, we're all about tuning. Then obviously, yes, if you undervolt, like I show on the channel, the Ryzen, you can cool it with basically any cooler on the market, but that's not what we're after. So. What we have here in general, it's basically a blend of used and new components. It is a build for someone who still uses laptop hard drives in a desktop PC. We are using this with an RTX 2070 Super to test if everything works fine with this cooler, okay? So I say we get unboxing and we get building. Massive box, empty box for a tiny CPU. But anyways, let's go ahead and install it. Okay, so here comes the start of the show. So with the motherboard already, let's take a look at this cryorig thing. Okay, so we have detailed instructions, which is always good. And again, it's compatible with every socket, so okay. Ooh, I can already tell you it looks nicer than I was expecting. It does look very nice. Like, let me tell you that, it looks very nice. So the top is magnetic. You can just press it, take it off, um, so you can just put the fans in, which is nice. And uh, yes, very convenient. I like it. I say we get ahead and install it. Okay, so they give you a ton of things. Many back plates, thermal paste, low noise adapter, things to connect the fans, brackets for all the sockets, even a little screwdriver you can use to slot through the actual cooler. So on AM4, the mounting process is pretty simple. You just have to remove these. So you can use your integrated AM4 backplate, which is actually nice. For the paste, they also give you a nice spatula, so that's pretty straightforward as well. You just spread it out. You don't really need to spread it out, to be honest, but uh, you know, we can do it since they give us the spatula, but really, if you just apply it nicely, it will spread out on its own. If you want to spread it, just go in uh, parallel lines. That's usually a good way to do it. And the edges will usually get covered on their own. So you don't have to really go crazy to get all the edges covered if you don't want to. But you know, if you want to be extra precise, you can just do it as I'm doing it. And it's now fully covered, which is nice. Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and mount our nice cooler. So step one is you remove this, which is the top end. And then of course you want the Cryrig logo on the bottom. So you then peel off the sticker if you don't want to have temperature issues and you just align it on the screws, which are there, just like that. And then you use this to tighten it going in from the top. Okay, so as you can see, even with high profile RAM, we can just put our fan there and it won't interfere. To lock it, 
we use those wire brackets, which are, well, I don't know if you've ever seen one, but if you have never seen one, they basically, you hook them on the front of your fan, and then you just put it here on the side, and you stretch it until you lock it on the cooler, just like that. Now, this being a dual tower, you also have to slot one fan basically inside the cooler, and you do so just like this. And then obviously you use these again to lock it. Now, yes, it will take a while to cable manage, but this is what you pay to have RGB. And they're all three pins, so it's not too difficult. So I say I just close everything up, put everything into the case with the cooler, etc. And then we come back with the build finished. And here we are with the build fully finished. Now outright, I will address the aesthetic thing because a lot of people say all-in-ones just overall look better. And now sure, that is subjective. But of course, those LED screens that we've seen on all-in-ones made them unique. But I do think that we see like this one also looks kind of nice. I think really the underglow of LEDs under this sort of plate that they put on top of the cooler really makes it stand out and unique and complements the build. But you're probably not watching this video for the aesthetic, you care about the performance. So, first of all, I will give you some results that I tested. Now, this build right here, is actually giving me some issues but this is unrelated from the cooler which is absolutely amazing but this motherboard i think it might actually be slightly faulty so unfortunately you will have to just take my words for the testing so if you see it do weird things in the background just just okay ignore it but here we are with the full results for you guys okay so we have tested this ryzen 9 1500x under full load under Prime 95 small FFT in full AVX workload. And even there, we did not reach the 80 degrees throttle point. So this CPU absolutely passed the test. I would say it is definitely on par performance wise with a 240 millimeters only one water cooler, while actually being even quieter than some of the cheaper all-in-ones in which you can definitely hear the pump pinning because you know pumps they run at a fixed speed so they are very noticeable so this has that benefit as well during normal use case this is another benefit of going air cooled it is literally whisper quiet you cannot hear it at all which is very nice what about gaming you might be wondering well surprisingly even though the gpu was putting out some heat we still managed to keep the cpu under 70 degrees in gaming scenarios. Now, this is probably the most crucial point of this review. So if you wanna go with air cooling, your main issue is actually gonna be the extra heat in the case because the air cooler puts the heat inside the case, whereas the water cooler just outputs it out right in the space. So the main thing you want to consider is do you have a really power hungry GPU that is running way too hot already, like a 3090 or a 2080 Ti that's hard to cool? Because if that's the case, then you do want a really good airflow in your case or you just want to go with a water cooler but if you have a low power card like an, in this case we have an rtx 2070 or if you have like a 3060 a 4060 even a 4070 i would say anything up until a 4070 ti would be nice generally up until the 70 series of nvidia cards and the 700 series of amd radeon lineup like the for example 6700 xt 6750 xt to mention a few those would be fine but if you have a car that outputs a lot of heat you might want to do it differently okay so that's for sure something to consider if you want to go air cooled and if you want the looks i can definitely recommend this one and i'm gonna go as far as to say that this thing can actually handle top of the line models as well again it is compatible with every socket am4 am5 all the lgas and as you've seen in my m906 from silence review you can actually pair one of these coolers with a 16 cores, 32 threaded Ryzen 9 CPU and be fine. This one also has the looks definitely and it comes with two RGB fans out of the box at a relatively good price. Now pricing is not fully available as of making this review, but they told me it's gonna be a mid-range pricing. So it's gonna definitely be cheaper than an all-in-one. So that should make it for a compelling option against an all-in-one, obviously. So this is it. Consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more. I do builds overclocking undervolting tutorials and i hope to see you in the next one as well goodbye